300. So, so that uses as a dump for them and they don't need to remove it? It's all it. gone. Okay. There's no more issues with that. There's nothing left. So That seems to have worked out. Yeah, so uh, okay. it seems like he's uh, completed both projects and uh, the one under the enforcement order and the RDA for the 500 yard and the road, um, you know, satisfactorily. Okay. At this point, doesn't he submit an official request for compliance? Or well, he he did, and that's oh, okay. why I took the I took the site walk. Yeah. I invited everyone, and so I went out on Sunday. I prepared two letters here that just say that you've completed your projects and we're we're satisfied with them. So okay. I don't know if you want to. Well, I'm prepared to if sign. you're accepting these pictures or you want to do site visits now, but uh, if you want to sign no, those. No, I trust, I trust your Yeah, it, it wasn't really. Your knowledge of it. They did well beyond what they uh, needed to do. Looks good. This Should one, we do just a. This one here in particular. You can just see. Yeah, the, that's a nice slope. It's a lot less all steep. All the work that went into that. Than what used to be there. I told them the next time I come back, <coughs> I want to see those flags bowls painted. But yeah. <coughs> that's the worst part of the whole project. So. so we don't need to, I mean, procedurally, do we need to vote to? I would vote to this? close it out because, um, you know, I, I don't see why not. It, it was an issued enforcement order and an issued uh, determination. So and he's, re he's, he's requesting it, yeah. <laughs> he's kind of paired with that in, in mind. <laughs> I make a motion we close out the RDA for the Reading uh, Revolver Arm Rifle Club or Rifle and Revolver Club. Okay. I'll second that. All right. All those in favor? Okay. And one from the enforcement order. And I make a motion that we close out the enforcement order. Okay. The second. I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor? Okay. Um, it being past 7.05 by all my watches, um, let me open up the notice of intent. So at this point, uh, we will open the public hearing for uh, notice of intent 270-0633, 118 Willow Street, Map 20, Lot 224, Salido. Um, it's going to be opened and conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act. Massachusetts General Laws Chapter 131 Section 40 is amended and the Reading General Bylaws Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. The Commission will receive reports from its administrators, technical advisors and other town departments. The Commission will address questions and comments to the applicant and the public will be given an opportunity then to ask questions of the applicant which should be directed to the chair. Please give your name and address before your comments and or questions are presented. There is an attendance sheet at the entrance and I ask everyone please to sign in um, even if you're not commenting on this hearing. At this time would the members of the Conservation Commission introduce themselves starting with Kim. Will Finch. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Terry Sullivan. Okay. And just for the record, would you please introduce yourself? Yes, I'm Tom Hughes from Hughes Environmental Consulting. Welcome. Uh, I'm here on behalf of uh, Nino and Mary Ann Salido, uh, who are both present, and, and uh, Jennifer Vieira, who's with uh, Contemporary Contracting, is also here in case there's any questions okay. uh, for the builder. Um, the site is located at 118 Willow Street. Uh, this is a picture of the house with the assessor uh, lines on it, which are more or less accurate. Um, you can see the existing house, <coughs> the driveway, there's a stone patio here, a little jut out from that patio, another patio area here, a walkway here, two sheds, um, and it's fairly typical uh, you know, single family. <coughs> there's a wetland area back here. Um, I'll show you a little bit more about that in a second. I don't know where this shoot to start with. 
So this is a view of the house from the backyard, actually from Wetland Fly Gate 2. Mm -hmm. um, you can see again the driveway, the patio area, the little jut out from the patio, patio area, the other patio area here. You can't really see the sheds, but the walkway to the sheds is over there. The wetland area is kind of an odd shape. It took me a while to figure it out. Um, vegetation was, was helpful, but really soils ended up just kind of taking over. I walked it with Chuck and we pulled some soil plugs. Basically, the wetland falls along here. You get brighter soils on the lawn side uh, or the upland side. You can, you know, four four. No sign of modeling. We've got sort of four two with modeling in the wet up in here. Still not very, not really saturated, but damp. As you go back here, we cross over a lawn area and go behind sort of a little island area that's behind these trees. And then it kind of goes, wraps around and comes back. I'll show you on the plan in a second. Um, within the upland area, you've got black cherry, honeysuckle, multiflora rose, as well as red maples, some um, sensitive fern, the, sort of a mix of veg. Um, the soils within that island, sort of upland portion of that, are still bright and extremely friable, just really, really dry. And then when you go into the wet area, you've got jewel weed, the, the fern, and no sign of anything that, that's back up or, or drier. So the soils kind of guide where that line goes. But I would note that even if you were to cut straight through the lawn from my first to my end flag, it really doesn't make a difference on the project. It's far enough away. So I'll flip this back around. So the plan kind of shows how that wetland line kind of loops around that back area and then comes up and then goes back away. So the, um, the existing home and patio area is about the same distance as, as what's being proposed. So basically within the existing patio area and going a little bit into the lawn area, um, we're proposing to remove the patio and replace it with a garage. On top of the garage is a, a roof deck and a small jut out from the house to extend the, um, it's basically an addition to the bedroom. Um, there's a little bit more pavement that's required to make all this work to bring it down in line with the end of the garage. Um, and I'll show you some detail on what's happening with the pavement in a minute. And to keep our impervious on site from increasing, we're removing the rear shed and um, we're removing the walkway out to it and this patio area here. Um, so when you do all the math out, we're actually a net, a net decrease in a purpose by um, the numbers on the plan and something like 20 or 30 square feet, not very much, but that was there. Um, it's really a fairly simple project. We're 57 feet to the proposed garage from the wetland area. Um, as, as you saw from the photos, it's sort of a big expanse of existing lawn, and the wetland is really off-site. A2 is just behind the property line over <coughs> here. A1's over on the next door property, but then all the rest are, are on the property that is behind them. We do show one bound. Um, on the property line at 25 feet offset from that line portion between A1 and A2. The problem is putting a bound in the middle of that yard area just doesn't seem to make an awful lot of sense. Um, you know, your regs do allow it to be vegetation. So if you do want something back there, what I'd ask is for the flexibility as your reg regulations allow to have that be a shrub or, or a tree. Instead of a bound? Instead of a bound. And we could do bounds you know, bound on the property line, but kind of right dead center in the middle of the lawn. I mean, they've got kids and you don't want you know, a bound in the middle of the lawn that's being actively used if you can avoid it. And uh, as I as I know it, I mean, I can read you the regulation itself, but the regulation does say it can be bounds, pipes, trees, shrubs, or a number of other things. So it would be certainly allowable if you feel, if you feel what's necessary. I, I don't really see the benefit because you've got sort of lawn all around it that's existing and being used in the project itself. And 
is 57 feet from the wetland and uh, really kind of negligible impact. Um, and let me show you a little bit more about the how the garage fits in. This was a question Chuck had on site, which actually was, was a good question because it, it forced us to look at something I had not seen, which was the architectural plans, and make sure it actually fit into the site from an elevation perspective. And some adjustments were made up and down. They didn't affect the site plan, but they actually did affect the, the garage design um, to make sure it would actually work. Basically, the, um, the area in front of the garage is going to sort of be ramped up in a way that works with the hill going down. So we're not really significantly changing any grades and it's going to allow them to go in without removing a ton of pavement and without regrading and creating a big water problem. Um, so this was um, sent in to Chuck this week by email and I, I printed out some ledger size copies of that. So again, here's sort of the pavement being added, how that grading is going to work. Um, and I think you know, I think it's a relatively simple project and pretty straightforward. Okay. Um, I just, I'm just going to start off with one quick question. Um, since unfortunately I couldn't make a site visit, and I apologize uh, about that. Um, the wetlands flags, is, is there, it looked pretty flat from your photos. So flags like seven through three. That you know that whole jut out. Yeah. Is there a break and slope back there? I mean, is there? Very subtle, but it's there. Yeah. And that's that's what helped to put that back on. Yeah. There's basically kind of running along here. There's a drop off of you know it's probably close to a foot. It's mm -hmm. visible, but it's not not very significant. Mm -hmm. Drops off, and it wouldn't surprise me if this area was just filled when they developed and they stopped at the property line. That's kind of just the remnant of that, and they didn't put a ton of fill in. Um, then it kind of, that area kind of stays flat, and then it rises up with this, um, at behind these maples, actually back in here. There's a little bit of a rise, and it, it's, what was, what was really rough was trying to figure out what was happening right in here, because you kind of have this rise, the, the topography doesn't drop in any real discrete fashion. There's definitely a change back there, and it is you know, very gentle. Yeah. So the soils in here <coughs> exhibited enough to have me call that wet. When you go another 10 feet behind my wetland line, you actually get a muck. You get you know yeah. real deep organic clay. <coughs> so what's your best guess for why that's got that shape instead of some sort of, do you think it's, um, it's just historic fill? I'm not sure it's even fill. I think it's just a, a remnant feature. You've got the, it could be fill, but it's it, you know it's got some mature maples right. on it. It's been there for a long time, so it could just be an odd feature that's been there. Um, but the soils were real, real crumbly, and I was you know pouring water on them to try to get get a read on them. But they were they were bright. I could find you know little no indications of modeling. I'll open up to other questions from the commission. Does anybody else have any questions or comments at this point? <clears throat> it's a well thought out plan and significantly far enough away from the wetlands that I don't, I don't foresee it being a problem at all. Chuck, did you have any questions or comments on this at this point? Yeah, I, uh, I had a couple just um, because I was able to work with Tom. Um, the application process so most of my questions have been answered at this point <clears throat> but I was wondering if you had decided on erosion control and the runoff from the driveway if you're going to do anything about that correct we show silt fence I'm sorry I should mention that we show silt fence here running across the back um, so yeah we're you still got to keep that in there yeah I mean it's it's flat enough I feel I feel because we're disturbing in the buffer zone, erosion control serves the purpose of limiting disturbance, keeping people out of areas closer to the wetland. I'm not sure it's going to really come under great stress, which is why we've only just proposed erosion you know, the silt fence as opposed to silt fence and hay bales or a beefier thing. And and I would suggest that, that it would be acceptable to swap that out with straw waddles or whatever is most available. Um, but that there needs to be some something there to market the work and that can function reasonably as well. Okay. Um, 
but not straw waddles. So any, anything else? Okay. Yeah. Um, do you anticipate uh, bare ground underneath the, the two sheds that you're removing and the path and would you yeah. modify yeah, the, the erosion control around that? Um, we can do that. I, I don't know. It's so flat. I really don't know that's necessary if it's, you know, seated quickly. I, I guess what we could do would be if you wanted to have a condition that required it, if it's outside the growing season, that it be mulched or, or covered over until it can be seated. We could put erosion control on that if you'd like. I, I don't foresee that creating an issue. There's enough lawn between those areas and the wetland, and it's fairly flat. And it's, there's not, you know, if it were somewhere at the near the base of the driveway, I may be more concerned because you might get a bunch of water from the green storm running mm -hmm. down the driveway. But there's nothing really directed in that area that would create an issue. And the the driveway, the uh, sheet flow on the driveway, are you concerned about that and you do a... Well, no, because right now you get sheet flow from the driveway and it's handling it fine. And I think that the minor change with the entrance to the uh, garage shouldn't create a problem. Okay. I mean, again, if the commission was concerned, I suppose it could be edged in a band of you know stone or something put at the end of it to, to handle water, but it seems to be handling pretty well right now. Yeah, it's just, it, and then just the commission on the bounds question, if, if we can figure out what's going to happen with that. So I can, I'd, I'd like to go back to, why did you say no straw oil? Can you qualify that? I'm curious. We've used those a lot. and. Past. I don't. I don't like them. I feel like they're very light. They are they're light. hard to uh, put yeah. in properly, and dealing with contractors. And um, this is not a tough site, but still, they you can get them, and they're they come round, mm -hmm. but you can get flat ones too, and they just look ridiculous. So it's not really it's not really the spirit of an erosion control is not being covered by those straw walls. So I think if they're not anchored down, they float. <laughs> yeah, and they have to be anchored down in such a way that you're just, you really, you know, you can, I guess you could jam sticks and stakes into them, but mm -hmm. um, mulch, you know, mulch socks work good. The silt fence works good without the hay bale in this situation. Um, and I know they prefer it because they're cheap. Straw walls. Well, the contractors are coming, going to get them, and they can buy them like 25 foot, so right. it, it's... It's good, but they're they're a little bit too light in a lot of cases. Mm -hmm. so. Okay, I just I just wanted to. They have they're that. absolutely no barrier. So I, wa I wanted to have that on the record. Yeah. So. Um, something that I just wanted to add, just as I'm thinking about it. So that that new proposed porch, um, what's going to happen to the rainwater that hits that? Is that going to be the, the house, is, yeah, the house is currently no. The, the house is currently guttered. I assume um, it's going to be guttered as well. Yeah. So the new area just be you know we'll adjust the gutter system to, <coughs> to handle that, and um, that currently runs. Some of it runs onto the driveway currently, and some of it runs off from the building corners onto lawn. And again, it you know it handles it pretty well. Okay. So just spill off. If it's a choice, our preference is to put it on the lawn. Yeah, and you don't send yeah. it down the driveway and into the catch well, basin and out to the. Where it's on the yeah. driveway now is right where the entrance to the garage would be, so it'd be kind of a silly place to leave it. Right. Yeah. So, I, I think you'll find that, that keeping water out of the garage is going to drive them to do that. Um, but you've got that large expanse of lawn, and lawn is actually a really good treatment. Yeah. For I was going to mention, um, you know, if you're doing that excavation to expand the driveway and do all that digging, just um, it's a minor point, but if, if you want to extend the uh, silt fence, sort of straight back instead of curve it around near the straight driveway, across, yeah. Yeah. Sure. that was just a, just a thought. Um, you know, I'm sure it would make more sense once it's, you know, yeah, a I think reconstruction I, meeting. Or yeah, and I think as long as we keep it, my, my goal here was... When I when I talked to the surveyor about putting on the plan, I wanted to keep it out of the thirty five foot. Yeah. Yeah. You know, just um, the twenty five foot on the survey and the ten foot zone curve, which just to kind of yeah. Yeah. 
But that, I mean, that still keeps it out of the 25 right, bucks. Right, right, so no, no, so, yeah. right. So we can, and I agree with you, I was kind of looking at how it dead ended there. Um, but the other thing I do want to do is try to keep the contractors on the site. So. No, I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, um, soil that's excavated, will it be, will there be much excavated? Is it slab? Um, there is, there's a, is there, a there are footings for the, for the foundation. Um, there'll be soil excavated, some retained for backfilling, but the rest will just be taken off. They're not looking at a big pile of them in the backyard. Okay. Um, and um, I'll, why don't we get around to the, the bounds. Um, I, I myself, I, I like to see bounds set at the property line. Um, and I have seen cases where uh, we have had bound set at the property line, but a little bit kind of submerged, so maybe it's even with the soil level, or maybe just slightly raised because you know additional mulching is gonna happen on top of that um, lawn, you know. Um, so it, it might get buried, um, but it, just a small marker bound, I think at the property line. Uh, so you're talking back in here? Yeah. Yeah, I think, um, I think that's fine. It, my, my view on that, it either has to have a lot of reveal or it has to be flush. I, I'm thinking, <coughs> I, I flush, I, flush would be good, so you can mow over it. Okay. Um, Is that um, at A two? Is that what you're talking about? Where the oh, kind twenty five of, feet off the line along the property line, where the twenty five yeah. foot no disturb crosses the line. Yeah, okay. We can add we can add a flush marker, that, or flush bound there. Um, yeah. So. And, and what we typically suggest is if we scissor it with a um, rebar pen so that you can find it. Okay. Okay. That helps. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's, a good um, That's a good idea. We can do like they did on West Street and stick them <clears throat> like stone head. Yes. <laughs> so we have way out of the yeah. <laughs> I don't think it's necessary at this point. I have a question. Go ahead, Bo. How about that? The bound on the, that was su just suggested on the rear yeah. property line. It appears from the pictures that mowing it is being done beyond that onto the abutters property. Is that it's it's been maintained that way since well before they bought the property, right? Um, right. And it, you know when when you've got that area of lawn, I mean I don't know whether they have any kind of prescriptive rights or not on that land, but they've been, it's been mowed. And I looked back through aerial photographs and yeah, I couldn't really find the beginning of it. Um, the forest walls live on Summer Street or Summer Ave. I think so. Summer they, Street. Uh, I mean, 28 Summer Street. Yes. Yeah. But yeah, no, I mean, the, the thing is the shed being removed is being removed, you know, across the property line. Yeah. yeah. I will note that the only square footage we took credit for removing in terms of imperviousness was what was on their property. Right. So yeah. we are actually removing some impervious, but it's off property. And we yeah. don't count that. So I think we only count like 30 something square feet of that shed. Yeah. Um, so it looks like you're within the aquifer protection district limits, you were saying? Right. Um, so, I mean, at this point, it, it seems pretty, pretty straightforward and a pretty clear plan. It's reducing um, impervious area. Um, we're getting those bounds placed in. Um, you know, uh, it seems like a pretty straightforward project. Um, at this point, I'll open up questions to the public. Does the public have any questions? Yeah. Okay, any other questions from the commission? No? Yeah, I have one more. Um, we were talking about stockpiling. You said most of the material is going to be taken away. Do you, are you going to have a designated stockpile area um, on the site? Inside the emotion control somewhere. I'd, I'd like to give the contractors some sort of freedom to put it uh, put it somewhere. But I know that, that as homeowners, the, the Salidos are not going to want a big pile of dirt there for long. I mean, basically, you're going to have it on the ground, you know, as you're excavating. If at all. I mean, it's possible that it could all be taken off by a truck, but I, you know, if you'd like us to designate the building, you could. But, I think the erosion control will do, do plenty to stop the from any issues, and it's not going to be. Good. No, that's it. Okay. Um, check out.
Chuck, what do you think the chances are we could draft an order conditions for the next meeting? Sure. Okay. All right. Then um, I have a motion to um, close and a motion to be a motion to issue an order conditions. I make a motion that we uh, close the hearing and um, can you agree together? And issue an order conditions. <laughs> sure. Okay. Start. All right. All those in favor? Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. We will, uh, at the next meeting, we will be, which is on, help me out, let's see, October 22nd, we will be reviewing the order of conditions that details all the um, real exact nitty gritty requirements for the project. Um, most of it is just general, for us, is general boilerplate. I don't know if you've seen an order of conditions before, but. Um, if you show up that night, we'll give you a copy, and we can go through it with you. And if the, cool. if the draft is ready in advance, is it possible to get it prior to the, to the meeting? Or? Um, if if it is if it is available, um, I don't know how yeah, your schedule looks. Trying to get it, you know, usually try. towards the end of next well, week or the beginning of the Yeah, that would be fantastic. Yes. Okay. It's just helpful. I do need to know. Either squirming in my seat or effectively <laughs> participating. I know it, and it does save some. If it's possible, if we if we can do it, I know it saves time in the meeting too. So, thank, thank you. you. All right. Have a good night. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Um, at this point, we are going to discuss the uh, 710 request for determination of applicability 14-15 for 196 Salem Street, map 23, lot 88, Ferreira. Um, okay, Mr. Joseph Ferreira? Yes, jo Joseph Ferreira. Welcome. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, welcome. Do you want to go over your project just briefly? Yes, please. Go for it. Okay. Um, what I would like to do, or ask, ask for the, for the uh, board's approval, is to install an asphalt uh, dri driveway on the left um, side of, 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 of the property, from the sidewalk to the entrance of, of like the one car um, garage. Right, right now, it's, it's dirt, rocks, and some grass at, at the end. <clears throat> and, the, and the length that they would do would be 131 feet in length and about 11 feet in width. So I want to try to keep it as small as I can, you know, just to get into the um, uh, go garage. Okay, and that's not uh, increasing any grade, or you're not gonna, you're not gonna, you're gonna put it at the existing oh, elevation yes. of the ground right now. Correct. Okay. Yes. Um, also, you're doing some trimming? Yes, I have a couple of beautiful trees out front. They flank the property out front, one on the left side, one on the right. Um, they're, mass, they're really over, overgrown. Some of the branches are over the house, some are touching the house. Um, I would like to just trim some of those branches so that they're not over the house or touching the house. Um, I'd like, I mean, I believe trimming will also make it healthy. Uh, they're actually beautiful trees, and I, it's, the house would have great curb appeal if I could just trim them. And that's all I want to do is trim them. Okay, like cutting off, uh, cutting off all the overhanging branches. Yes, yes. Okay, okay. Um, not to exceed, it says not to exceed 30% of each tree. Correct. I, yeah. don't, I don't anticipate going that far, to, to, to be honest with you. Yeah. Um, I don't know the limit of trimming that would actually endanger the health of the tree. You can do Anybody? up to a third. You can do up to a third? Okay. Yeah, that's a serious cleaning. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I doubt that I would get to that number anyway. Okay. I just want to get the stuff that's over the house and touching the house. Um, and then a stone patio? Yes. Um, the rear, actually there are two of them. Um, on the left side of, of, of the house, again, the rear door, I've got a four feet by seven foot um, uh, walkway or entry. 
I, I would like to make put stone pavers there so that you can walk into the house you know without tracking in mud yeah. Yeah. and on the opposite side of the house which is the right side um, we have an indent in the property we have a dining room door um, 23 feet by I believe it was I can't remember what the width was seven. seven feet I'd like to put a stone stone pavers as a patio there as well and is that going to pretty much just be end up being flush with um, the outside walls? Correct. Okay. Yeah. It, so it's it not going to bump out too much house. further. Okay. No, it, <coughs> it will not exceed the the line of, of the house. Okay. And the grade I've graded the way the rest of the prop, the way the rest of the uh, land is graded, it's it's actually gently sloping towards the wetlands. Okay. We'll so right at grade there, basically. Okay. So you're going to be right at grade there. Yes. Yeah. Yes. So, so really, the maximum depth of excavation for some of these patios is like what a foot? Maybe? I don't know, no, no. I don't anticipate go, going down at all You're because just gonna... the height is perfect. I can add two inches of like the stone dust, okay. put it on the blocks, okay. and I'm at grade. Okay, yeah, so it's going to work without any excavation. Correct, correct. Okay. If I, I mean, I, I was actually thinking about putting a deck there. But the deck, I would have to bring it down about a foot. And I, I, I don't want to do that. To make it drain. And yeah. And the the pavers are perfect. Yeah. Keep the same grade. Yeah. And the step is nice, nice small step to the yeah. house. Yeah. <coughs> um, any questions by, or is there anything else that is no. not written there? OK. No. Any questions by the commission? No. <coughs> well, I was just wondering on the map, how far away is that if patio you, from the if you go one page further, it's far away, yes. but it's yeah, we, close it though. Okay. The slope is pretty steep, and it's maybe like 10, 15 feet away from where the patio would end. So it's just kind of like anything pretty much going to go straight down there. Yeah. The top like of the slope is like yeah, Technically, the wetland is far away, but the top, the top of the slope is not very, it's not far, very away. far away. And it's a decent slope. Top of slope, so uh, vegetation, like lawn ends it's at the top lawn of slope. And it's just yeah, like organic yeah. weeds yeah. and <coughs> some shrubs and stuff. Yeah. It's relatively close. Okay. So that was the only thing that I really had to wanted to bring up. Okay. Um, it, seemed, it seems according to his presentation that he's not going to go beyond the, the line and the no. back of the two jut outs. <coughs> and yeah. that's what it appears to be on the plan. Mm -hmm. so. so that's really. Not getting any closer, really, to the mm -hmm. top of the Right, right. Um, Chuck, did you have any questions? I did not. Okay. <clears throat> um, I didn't have um, any questions. It seemed like a pretty straightforward project. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of the work is um, on the side of the house that's away from the wetlands. So, um, and the work that's closest to the wetlands is pretty minor in extent. So. Uh, um, at this point, uh, I'll entertain. Yes, Mr. Zimbors. Uh, I have a question. Go ahead. I may. Uh, just, I just don't want you to get in trouble. The driveway that you're installing, is that going to go into Salem Street itself or through the sidewalk area? Right up to the curb, to like the sidewalk. Okay. Well, well, is it going to go into the sidewalk area? Well, probably abut the sidewalk. Like touch it. So you don't have to remove any curbing or go down to the existing pavement. The reason why I'm saying is the sidewalk area from the back of the sidewalk, which is approximately a property line, it may be within a foot of that, to the roadway itself is town property. And if anything happens in there, your contractor would need a permit from the engineering office. I see. I see. I just want to make sure. I just don't want you to get in trouble with other contractor getting in trouble. And um, so if it's going to be in that area, just have the con. It's a fifty dollar permit. Actually, okay. it's a twenty five dollar permit. Right, twenty five dollar permit. Okay, thank you for letting me. Uh, the other uh, thing is the trees you're talking about trimming. They're not mm -hmm. public shade trees, are they? Uh, they're on my property. Yeah, I don't, yeah, know I don't think. They okay, are. I just I just yeah. want to make sure they weren't in the grass mm -hmm. plot because if they were, then you would have to notify the uh, tree warden. But since okay. they are trees, yeah, no. that's not an issue. Thank yeah, you. They, they look to be on his side of yeah. the property, outside okay. of the tree line. Yeah. Just figure it out so he doesn't get himself in trouble. Sure. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, Because I don't like Hi. to cut trees anyway. I like I like having the trees. Well, that's good. You're in a good spot to have trees. Yeah. Surrounded. <laughs> um, any other questions from the public at this point? No. I just wanted to 
just have one thing. Go ahead. I had mentioned to um, him at the sidewalk just to mm -hmm. make sure that he notifies the um, the tree cutter of farming policy. Just to make sure that he knows what to do. So okay. Kind of He's very quiet, but I just want to make sure that's all. Thank you, Kosher. Thanks. We're trying to get word out to uh, tree cutters and trimmers in town that we like to be notified when they're doing work. Okay. So. We've sent out some email, some mailings to them, and we've been hearing from them. It's better that they talk to us up front than we stop what they're doing. Sure, sure. And that would be in general for other projects because we are notified because he has notified us of right. this project. Right, so right, It's sort of right. just a general but that, But it helps getting the word out. Sure. Um, so at this point, uh, I'll entertain a, a motion. Issue negative determination. I move we issue a negative determination for uh, the RDA before us. Okay, is there a second? second? Okay, all those in favor. Okay, that's uh, good news for you. Okay. A negative, negative determination. Yeah, and I heard negative. <laughs> negative I determination a little means, nervous that, that. <laughs> means that you do not have to submit this as a additional application, a notice of intent, a more detailed, more involved filing. Okay. So we are not rejecting your plan and asking you to go further. We are accepting your plan. So we're issuing, we're saying no, that it doesn't apply to be a notice of intent. So okay. I'm trying Thank to break you. it down. I hope that's understandable. We're yes. going to draft that. Um, I have it ready. Oh, you have it ready? Yeah. Great. Great. Well, then we're going to sign it tonight. Oh. Um, and you can pick it up from Chuck. Um, tomorrow. Well, I can mail it out to you, or you can come no, down and pick it up. I can stop by. I'm, I'm always around. I can stop by. So it's going to be after 3. I have a couple of site inspections prior to that. So anytime after 3, we'll be ready after 3 tomorrow. And, sure. oh, and you arrive around 1.30. Oh, yeah. I, get, I get in at 1. Yeah. So. Between so 1 and 3. So come between 1 and 3? No. Oh, no, after, after 3. Yeah. After 3. Yeah. Oh, okay. so. Anytime after 3. Okay. Thank you, Boyd. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. Yeah. Oh, that's a good plan. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah. And I will make sure they have to get okay. yeah, the come in and they get the permit. Okay, good. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. I need to sign a second spot. Okay. Okay. Then uh, moving right along to. Uh, Road, uh, request for determination of applicability roadway maintenance for the town of Reading. Mr. Zip. No, Chris is going to speak for this. Chris Cole. Thank you. Um, Welcome. Thank you. Um, my name is Chris Cole. I'm with the uh, engineering division. Okay. And um, the RDA before you tonight is for our FY15. We're over servicing um, streets. Um, there's 26 roads total, and 14 of these uh, streets are within your jurisdiction. Um, one of them is just a basic overlay pasture road, and the remaining 13 others are pavement uh, reclamations, uh, which, as you can see, include Libby Ave, all of the um, public accepted side streets off of Libby, uh, Howard Street between Sigsby and County. Uh, Margaret Road, uh, Pleasant Street from Parker Street down to the uh, very end of uh, Pleasant and uh, Sturgis Road. Uh, the contractor will be using best management practices um, throughout the project. Um, at a minimum, all catch basins will receive uh, filter fabric in them, and any catch basin within 200 feet of a resource area will receive a uh, silt sack. And um, any, also the contractor will be required to lumen seed any um, tree lawns within two weeks uh, after um, commencing the final pavement on the road. Um, and we ask the commission uh, to uh, allow the conservation administrator to re review this with us to determine uh, what will be required on each tree. Um, just for the sake of my layman's knowledge of this process, overlay just simply means placing a new layer of asphalt. Placing a new layer. Already there. 
No milling, right. no. No, raise, raise the structures, raise, raise and, the structures. and then just pave over everything. Okay. Um, and the reclamation is the grading down of the surface. So we pulverize all the existing asphalt layers, uh, regrade it, reshape it, and put binder and, uh, and top down. Binder and top. Okay. Um, we, we lower all the structures with the exception of a couple of key catch basins to make sure that we can drain the area right. so we don't flood everyone out. Um, then after the binder goes down, we raise all the structures up to the final grade and then put the final layer of uh, asphalt. Okay. Uh, we've got questions to the commission. The town, the town does a good job with this. They generally take care of any deficiencies that are um, highlighted. I, know, I think the last time, or maybe, maybe a couple of years ago, there were some issues that were taken care of in a fairly quick um, manner. So mm -hmm. I have no problems with this uh, RDA. Okay. Okay. Um, any other comments on this from the commission at this point? Um, I had a few comments. Uh, so in the last. Uh, year 2013 I think we discovered that the tree row um, the erosion was um, on some streets uh, when after rainstorms was an issue and we um, rewrote the contract within two weeks someone would come by and, mm -hmm. and put some seating down on that and that was great and uh, I think the last time we drove around I drove around with Chris that I made a comment about the drop inlets and um, curb inlet protections. Mm -hmm. Was that? Yes, that's that's a part of the contract. So any any curb inlet is going to be protected now Correct. along with the drop inlet. Correct. Great. Right. That's all. I, I didn't notice anything else that, uh, and I had no calls from, you know, anybody that uh, any resident of Reading uh, telling me uh, other than when is it when is it going to happen on my street? But uh, I didn't have any complaints last year, so last year was a very good project, and uh, I, I hope this this one goes as well. Would love to accommodate that question, and for every for everyone that they ask, but some unfortunately funding is we're limited by funding. Um, the only other thing that I'll bring to the commission's attention is that some of these uh, roadways are in. Um, Natural Heritage NHESP areas, and um, I've accommodated that in this order of condition by stating that as long as they stick within the guidelines of these conditions, which are standard erosion control and best management practices, that that's allowed under this order. Okay. Which ones do we get? Yeah. Uh, what Probably all of um, Libby, like Libby, yeah, yeah. yeah. it's a little bit. Yeah. I don't know the scene, but this <coughs> in this area too. Yeah, we just barely touch the edge of that one. Um, I just had, just as I think of it, um, are there? On these streets, is there um, consistent curving? Or, you know, I, there have been a couple spots uh, around town that I've noticed either the asphalt curve or the granite curve is just plain missing. And it's, um, and, you know, and, and it becomes a place where there's erosion. And, uh, and I guess I'm wondering, did you notice any of that? As I know this doesn't address additional well, curving, but I guess I'm wondering. Yeah during this process? Well, when we do apply the top layer of pavement anywhere that's not a currently existing granite curb or asphalt berm, um, we are installed, having the contract for install what we call a spill berm, which gives it a like a inch and a half lip on the edge of the road that will keep the water in the road and prevent, um, hopefully prevent any erosion from happening okay. on the sides. Is that, is that one of those it sounds like it's almost a mini berm. It's not even a no. Berm. It just it just basically what the, what the contract does is on the spreader they open up the gates on the edge and we allow the asphalt to spill out. And, they and, don't, and they depending don't. on the machine, it's just sort of a crust. And depending on how good the roller operator is, we gotcha. get anywhere gotcha. from an inch and a half to a two inch lip on the edge. <coughs> We'd love to install to curbing, something. right? Something We'd love to to prevent all that erosion and, yeah. and and a lot of it, truthfully, is when people when cars park on the edge of the road they especially on a narrow street, they have a tendency to go up in the grass 
and that's what damp that's what washes everything out and, and causes all destruction. We'd love to put curbings on every street, but the curbing actually costs us more than replace fixing the roadway. I'm sure. I'm sure. Well, plus in the winter time when the plows come in, you know they go up against that curbing and yeah. or lack thereof and mm -hmm. get out. If I remember correctly, it's something like thirty-five dollars a foot. Forty dollars a linear foot for each side of the roadway. So that's eighty dollars a foot for yeah. curbing. Yeah. Okay. And All we're right. probably paving for about, well, depending on what treatment, in the neighborhood of twenty to uh, fifteen to twenty thirty dollars a foot for the pavement for a standard mm -hmm. for a standard roadway. Significantly more. We attempted the f uh, first few years I got here that in all those areas, uh, and we actually established a policy that um, any roadway with a grade exceeded 6%, we'd install a granite curbing. Um, the problem, what happened in that, besides it being very costly, is that you, know, you have a 6% grade, then you see a washout leading down to a catch basin, so you get all the way to the catch basin, and before you know it, we're, we're putting curbing in on three quarters of the roadways. Yeah. And we were going from paving you know, 20 streets a year to five. And it's just, it's just too costly. I mean, we'd love to do it, but we just don't have the funds. And, we don't want to turn this curb yet. No. <laughs> Any questions from the public about this project? Yes. yes. Please state your name and address. Um, Helen with Faber, and I live at 106 with the app. OK. My question is, when you're going to, what are you going to do to the street? You're going to dig up the street? Because there has never been an actual base. We're going to, we're going to pulverize um, the entire roadway. Down to? Reshape. Well, it's when the when we call, say pulverize it, um, basically the machine that uh, comes through will pulverize all the asphalt and mix it with the gravel sub sub base that's underneath it. There is there is there's a very excuse me. I have lived there all my life. I understand that, but we just got through digging it up with the water main also. Yeah, and that's true. And there's decent material there. Oh, okay. Uh, matter of fact, the material was so good that we did not ha require the contractor to install the gravel on top of his trench like we normally would any other material uh, roadways. But basically, the machine for the top 18 inches mixes all the broken up asphalt and the gravel together. That gets reshaped. A lot of times, we have to remove some of the material. Then we put an asphalt uh, binder down, and then we pave the road over. Okay. Now the, the some of the side streets. We're doing all of them. All of them. All Except the for the street. private ones. We can't do the private ones. Okay. Um, that's maybe so the other ones, the one that ones that, that the uh, the residents have paid for. You are not going to repave those. Well, anything that's a public street, we can pave. Anything that is not a public street, i.e., a, a private street, which I think is. Can't marry. F. F. Looks like it's not oh, yeah. so Which is uh, F, and D. F Street. And uh, D Street. D. Part of, part of D Street. Know. Part of D Street. I think so. Yeah. One, one half of D Street and one half of F Street. Yeah, we can't do that um, because they're private roadways and we're not allowed to spend public funds on private property. So the rest of them will all be repaid? Yes. yes. Okay. Now, are you putting, question, <laughs> as that thing will be repaid, are you putting fire hydrants at the end of each one of these dead end streets? Well, uh, yes, we're trying to. Okay. Uh, unfortunately, um, as you know, the purpose of the fire hydrants. Still flush. Mr. Madam Chairman, if I may, because it really has nothing to do with conservation. Yes, you can get through it quickly. Okay, it's it's to facilitate flushing of the yeah. water main, uh, and actually for the flushing of the new water main. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but we're limited with space based on the existing layout, and we have to get these after the last in services. Mm -hmm. yeah. Sometimes there are driveways in the way and whatnot, and, and there's a couple locations where they ended up in front of someone's house, and they were just very adamant that they did not want the hydrant there, and you know we didn't want to get an argument, so we did install. I understand there was a flower bed. Pardon me? I understand there was one being put in a flower bed that someone wasn't too happy about. Well, I didn't hear that one. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Any, any other questions? No, that's it. Okay. I just wanted to know. No. I was gonna, when do you have any idea when? When what? We'd be next spring. In the spring. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Um, any other questions from the commission? No? Okay. Um, motion, please. Determination for the RDA for us. Okay, second. Second. Yeah, that's in favor. 
So you can spread the new rumor to your neighbors. We're actually going to do it next year. Thank you. We just put in a petition to Peter Heckenbrecher about. No, I understand. Ten years ago. Unfortunately, then after that, the water main project happened. Thank you very much for coming in. While we're signing it, um, I will open the notice of intent for Sturgis Park. Um, the public hearing for. Let's see if we've got the name here. Uh, do we have a number for this one? Looks like we don't. Yes, there is a number. It's um, 06. 34? Yeah. No. 634. Okay. The notice of intent, the public hearing for notice of intent 270 0634, um, Sturgis Park, Pine Ridge Road, Map 4, Lot 88, Town of Reading, Engineering Department, DPW, is now opened and being conducted concurrently under the authority of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protection Act, Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 131, Section 40, as amended in the Reading General Bylaws. Section 5.7. The hearing will be conducted in the following manner. The applicant will present the proposal. The commission will receive reports from its administrator, technical advisors, and other town departments. The commission will address questions and or comments to the applicant. The public will then be given the opportunity to ask questions of the applicant, which should be directed to the chair. An attendance sheet is being circulated. It's actually sitting at the door. Please sign in. Um, and at this point, um, would we let's introduce ourselves starting with Chuck. Chuck Taroni, Conservation Administrator. Elton Stater. Terry Sully. Brian Sullivan, Vice Chair. Anika Scanlon, Chair. Will Finch. Hey, thanks. Good evening. For the record, George Zim Morris, Town Engineer. Welcome. Um, thank you. And this is actually a, somewhat of a two part project. Uh, some of you may know, uh, hopefully, all of you know by right now. Uh, we had a problem last year, um, or we discovered last winter after we flooded the um, area for the skating ponds, that uh, water was um, breaking the bank, uh, the bank into the um, brook river at that portion. At least it looks like it's a river, according to you, which yes. Um, and while we were looking at uh, while we were looking at that uh, that area um, in late spring. We also discovered there was some erosion on the bank, and there's also further erosion upstream where the, um, where the uh, river takes a bend, obviously caused uh, during high flows. So we don't know what the, we don't know what the issue is. Uh, we don't really know what the problem is. So the first part of this is really to do a little exploratory excavation, uh, which we feel will be very minor. Um, we suspect one of two things. I mean, to stop the water from flowing into the uh, brook and, and emptying our uh, skating ponds. We, su we suspect there's probably one or two problems. Either there's uh, an underground pipe, and it's, which is probably fairly based on the elevation of where it's breaking through the bank. It's fairly shallow. It's probably only 18 inches down at best two feet. Um, that is there from who knows when and who knows what it's uh, draining. Uh, all we know is that uh, all of our drainage system is intact and there's nothing that's down in that location that should be a, a, a active pipe. So as we do an exploratory hole, which will be outside the bank area and actually inside our uh, skating pond area, which is a wetland, uh, wetland vegetation, will be, um, if we do find a pipe there, uh, what we will do is we will try to figure out where it goes, uh, probably through TV or just uh, sewer runs and uh, track the pipe. Uh, if we can't in uh, one way or the other anyways, we'll plug the end of the pipe and that would be the, for the most part the end of the excava uh, excavation. Uh, the other possibility is that there's just a, an area of um, cobbly soil or you know, very porous soil that over the years all the fines have washed out and it's worked its way into the bank. Um, in that case what we'll do is we'll replace the soil with a soil that has um, some additional fines and some clays to limit the pro uh, the flow of water um, below ground and depending on what the other existing soil conditions are in the area. We may also even put a small um, 30 mil impervious barrier parallel to the bank in, the, in our excavation area 
to limit any transmission of water from uh, that area we're disturbing into the bank itself. Are you talking about plastic sheeting? Yes. Okay, so like some high density. Bas bas yeah, basically what um, what everyone does when they're installing septic systems and they and they have breakout problems, they put a 30, uh, actually a 40 mil barrier, I should say, it is uh, vertically. Uh, that, that would be the last effort we feel that we could probably do everything with uh, limiting the different types of soils. Again, that would be very, a minor area, uh, it would probably be the length, the, width of, the length of our excavation along that we're running parallel to the uh, stream uh, bank and, and probably about, I'm guessing, 18 inches, two feet in height, that's it. We're not going to go all the way down. We're just going to, uh, it's going to be fairly minimal just to um, make sure we seal off that area where there may be really uh, pervious soil. Um, and that's all we plan on doing this winter. I mean, this fall and winter, and, and the area is is easily um, contained as far as disturbance because we'll be below the, below the uh, bank below, uh, into the uh, into the uh, skating pond area, which is basically a hollow, so it will be easy to control any of our excavation and whatnot, which will be very minimal. We, it may even be dug by hand. I don't know. Uh, I imagine it depends on what we really find out. So we'll be able to easily. Um, Clean up all that area, restore it. Uh, obviously, veg restoration of vegetation at this time of year is going to be very minimal, um, but it is going to be an area that uh, come the middle of November will be flooding out. Uh, so it will be underwater through the rest of the winter. Um, and then once the uh, spring season arrives and we drain the skating ponds, you know, um, we can effectively do a better job of restoring the vegetation. With respect to the minor washout of the bank, where we're having a problem right now, and the uh, where the bank takes a curve, we don't plan on doing that work for the spring. We want to be in a prime growing season. Uh, in those areas, we'll just reshape the bank to the existing grade that's there, and um, with some uh, loom and and wetland uh, seed mix. And we'll put a, a stabilization blanket on there to ensure it doesn't ensure the growth of uh, everything we're putting there. You're talking about area two now. We're talking about area one and two. Area one, one would be, area one would be where the um, area one would be that we probably have an area of about maybe two foot and two to feet, three feet in length where the water's breaking up that we have to repair the bank, yeah. bank a little bit. That's the one I saw. That's the, the small, that's a very small area. Actually, the bank in that area is somewhat stepped. We'll leave the step there. We just want to basically seal up a hole in the bank and put some vegetation in the area. Uh, in area two, uh, from the, obviously during high fl uh, flow events, the bank has lost its characteristics. It's severely undercut. Uh, it's almost a vertical bank. And in that area of the curve, probably for about 20 to 30 feet, we want to reshape that, re-slope it to what its natural condition was. Um, and if the commission would let us, if not, it's not a big deal, we can do everything with earth. What I'd like to do is the bottom, I do 18, uh, 12 inches, I think I put down in the detail. Uh, basically to, um, within uh, one foot of the flow line, above the normal flow line, which may, which probably will result in, um, based on the normal flow line, it's probably about four inches of flow. We're probably looking at an area of less than 18 inches in vertical height. I'd like to rip wrap that side to, to prevent further erosion during high storms. And then the rest would be wetland vegetation with a mat and everything. That work I plan on doing in the spring, not this time. <coughs> we'll just leave it for this time. Here. Okay, so just to be clear, the work that's proposed sort of for the immediate future, the fall, is going to be excavating to, you know, exploratory. Exploratory and fix the problem that we see. I expect the, the... Spring work will be reconstruction. Spring work will be the restoration of the... Uh, to completion of any lumen seed in, our, in that disturbance area for exploratory, and then also repair of the two bank areas. I mean, I expect that the, our expo exploratory hole... Um, it may be nothing more than a three-by-three three hole. Yeah. It, it really depends on what we find. I, I don't see it being that large. It's um, 
you know, there's there's nothing flowing until we flood the ponds. <coughs> So right. there's, there's, there's something that's fairly shallow to the surface that's causing the problem. Um, so that's going to occur on the landward side. It's not going to interfere with the, <coughs> the river. We, we won't touch the bank in there. It's right now you have the, the bank, uh, the bank of the stream comes up. There's a little bit level area for a couple feet. Then it slopes, then it slopes back down. We'll stay within that low area of the uh, skating ponds, what we'll call skating ponds themselves. So you'll be working on the bank of the skating ponds, what you're saying, for that. That, uh, oh, I'm not even going to touch the bank of the skating pond. I'm going to stay in the flat of the state. Oh, pond. okay, okay. okay. Um, I'll make all my repair there, and then all we have to do is just, you know, if there's something else that has to be done that may in, impede into the natural bank of the stream, I, I, I'll, I'll seal the plug in the pond and mm -hmm. leave the rest right. of that work for the springtime. Right. Yeah. Um, so if the repair work is happening in the spring, um, I would assume that that would be the time frame after this winter's ponds drain again. Mm -hmm. So I guess I'm just going to sort of throw out there um, a possible scenario. What if what happened previously happens again this fall or this winter between the time of investigating and repairing? Um, well, no. The I, I guess I misunderstood when you said repairing. The repair of the banks will occur in the spring. Right. The plugging of the hole, the plugging of the hole is going to happen now. Fall. It's going to happen now. <laughs> so, I mean, if, if, if something happens during the winter and, and the event occurs again, that means we failed in plugging the hole. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Okay. What was the guy? I just what wanted was, to what was, I just what was, wanted to understand that. had his finger in the dike. I can't remember. <laughs> so, um, I guess another concern um, would be, you know, the pack material around the pipe. If it's if it's a higher conductivity material, you know, that could be part of not just the plugging of the pipe, but the movement of water around the pipe. You know, I'm sure your investigation is going to get to the heart of where's the higher conductivity material transmitting all this scrap mm -hmm. water. Um, and where it's, you know, I think it's just soil. I don't think there's a pipe there. It's just only because of the fact that they've been doing this for who knows how many years. And yeah. it's all of a sudden just started. Well, so that's I, a little surprising, yeah. Yeah, so I think it's yeah. just that there's you know, probably some gravelly soil underneath that slowly over the years. The water's been finding its way, finding its way, washing a few fines. So it is probably coarse material. And so we have basically yeah. probably an area that's acting like crushed stone right now. That's, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's a, providing a, a conduit for the water to flow. Um, and, at, and at this point, um, there has been erosion that stepped into the stream. Is that going to get? I was moved? planning on leaving on leaving it only because I assume that you want me to. But if you if you want us to clean up any sediments, um, we will do that. I mean, it's you know, it's the, there's a very small amount where our leak is per se. There's more in the area where the bank washed out. There's probably an area that's uh, probably about at least 20, 30 feet in length. That we could go in there with a backhaul and just try to skim off the sediments right in, uh, right up top. You know, my understanding of streams is, you know, in the natural systems, each stream has its own sediment hunger. And if, if it's equilibrated at the existing, you know, yeah. point, I mean, the stream channel is already gonna, found. It, the stream channel is already found its new half. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, it's pushed them around and carved this old new path. I mean, I was just, you know, I was happy with leaving it. <coughs> I, I didn't want to go in and start disturbing anything in the bed of the uh, channel. Yeah. Allison, did you have a chance to go? Uh, no, that's too dark. Stuff. That point. Okay. Um, Chuck, have you seen this particular site? I, I haven't seen it either. Okay. So I've seen it <coughs> for um, this project. I don't remember it being a great big sediment load. No. Um, I think a lot heavy. of it has already gone. Right. Well, the fines have definitely yes. gone. It's the heavier that's behind. What's the width of the channel there? Um, well, I want to say the I want to say the average width at the bottom is probably five or six, and mm -hmm. the area where the bank's been disturbed, the, the the major erosion of the bank disturbed. I mean, that thing that mm -hmm. thing may even be as wide as eight feet right now. Mm -hmm with a little bit, you know, it, it originally went this way, and now it's yeah. kind of flattened yeah. out and going right through. You know, another thing, too, is, you know, streams naturally meander. Yeah. They do, you know, they do that. Um, yeah, they do. 
Um, Hopefully it won't meander into the skating line. Right. <laughs> it's right. not going to get that high. Um, it, it, the only question I have is, uh, without understanding what caused this, you're proposing a um, solution, and what if that changes? Would you? We'll have to come back to the commission. I mean, I, I, right now I only foresee it could be one of two things. If it's something else drastically, obviously I'll come back here. You know, we'll just button up the hole and come back here as fast as we can and um, you know, to uh, okay. give you another solution. So the, the washout area is five to ten feet and that's where you propose the riprap? Or is that up, upstream at number? That's upstream with the you know, bank, but that's upstream in area two. And that's also part of the project. So we're going to be approving both area A and Area one and two. Mm -hmm. Except the the bank restoration in area one and two, I'm not going to do in full spring. Mm -hmm. All I want to do right now is dig a hole, and most likely what I suspect is change the type of soil that's under the below so the surface within probably the top 12 inches to probably two feet below the surface. That's it. How old is the bank now? How long has it been there? How long has the bank been there? Yeah. It's been as long as I can remember. Hundred years. I, no. you know, we could probably look at some plans downstairs, but uh, yeah. too long. Huh? A lot older than I am. Yeah. It was a, it was former Farm Creek. I don't even know. Because wasn't Sturgis Park former I it was. farming I land? Yeah. I'm not sure. Hmm. Um, which, which, th so this, this particular project made me think. I, I remember the previous uh, proposal for. Um, Playground mm -hmm. project um, and the ball and the rec department ball field restoration um, redesign. Um, Where is that? Wasn't there going to be some additional? I remember this was talked about at one of the last meetings. Wasn't there going to be some additional what wetland? What the proposal sort of was is that one of the pond areas that um, we currently flood out, which there's a fair amount of wetland vegetation in it. Um, what the recreation would like to do with that um, was to raise the elevation so they can st still leave it as a field that is flooded in the winter times for skating, but, st but uh, also raise it to the extent that it could get some viable use during the you know, summer, the spring and summer months and fall months. Uh, and in doing that, we'd have to recreate the, the wetlands that we're, um, we're filling in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's all subject to funding and, and who knows. I mean, they're, it's, it's I, not, just, I don't know, I don't even, I'd have to talk to Mr. Uh, John, uh, John Cuto. I don't, I don't, I can't remember right now if it's actually even in the capital plan. No. Uh, it's something okay. that possibly could get revised around the time if they do get received funding for it. Okay, <coughs> so it doesn't sound like it's in the works for anybody at any Time in the not in the near future that because I, I don't of. want to see the town do the same thing twice. Yeah, I, I, it's not in the near future that I can recall. Okay. okay. Any questions from the public? Um, sure, just a couple. I'm Valerie Sachetter. I live at 141 Pine Ridge Road, right yeah. across from the basketball. Okay. Okay. Um, and I was on the committee with John Fudo and some neighbors and volunteers around town. Um, when you talk about the riverbank restoration mm -hmm. for next spring, I know it's not immediate, yeah. but there are spots along the bank that have big cement blocks, more on the South Street side. That's another project we have to do. That's another, okay, so that's separate from it's the, what we're it's talking as about. The, as what she's referring to is as the brook enters the um, box culvert that goes yep. underneath South Street, there's uh, wing walls, um, I think one side may be granite and the other side may be um, partly granite and partly curving. Mm -hmm. uh, and where uh, the backside is being undercut and eroded, uh, and we have to do a restoration or project on that. We also have a the same problem on the Abergelna River as the entrance to Lowell Street. We're losing a bank there. Um, we'll be working on that during the winter uh, during the winter months to get a project to do both of those and uh, and contract that out during the summer spring months. Okay. And then the other thing is, I just wanted to say, um, I'm over at the park quite a bit, and I noticed there is a lot of vegetation, um, and quite often it prevents a good flow of water going through there. And we even talked during the um, playground rebuilding 
maybe we could talk some Cub Scouts, Boy Scouts into making that a project of theirs that they help clean it up. Inside the, the bank bridge. itself, inside yeah, the stream itself. within, because there are times when it's just at a dead stop. And there might be just a little trickle of water coming through, and I can't imagine that that's good for, um, you know, mosquito infestation and, um, you know, other bacteria growing there. Yeah, so that's, I don't know that's, if that's something you could visit when you're. An, we can look at that, and that's entirely possible, but I just want to let you aware, you know, for that to occur, it would require a filing with the uh, Conservation Commission. And it also would require a uh, 401 permit with a DEP. Yeah, yeah, because you're actually doing work in the stream itself. <coughs> okay, so if we were to approach the scouts. That would that's fairly in, that's time. fairly involved, right? Okay. And that, you know, it, the problem <laughs> with that is that the uh, permitting process is probably about six months, and um, oh, would, would, and so we'd have to know well in advance of when the scouts wanted to do the work. Right. Well, that was just sort of a think out loud kind of thing yeah. during one of our meetings, but yeah. if that's something that we're able to take a look at in the spring. So, so your concern would be stagnant water that would breed mosquitoes. Right. Um, That's the big thing. And it's far enough away from the new playground, but you do have soccer and softball going on there, too. We can, we can look at that when we're doing when we're doing investigation and filing for the head wall vehement repair. Yeah. And see that if there is some areas of the screen that need attention, we can combine that with that filing, yeah. providing we have funds depending on large areas. Yeah. And so just, just so you know, so our approach is going to be um, to try and protect and maintain the natural habitat as much as possible. So our mandate is kind of a counterbalance to what you're proposing. <laughs> that's, that's fine. Compe not, competing not to interests. Say we won't, not to say we wouldn't <laughs> consider it, that's but fine. just to give you some feedback on that. That's great. So right. thank you very much. So, um, so getting to your detail, figure four, I'm trying to understand what you're, <coughs> what you're proposing there. And it seems to me with the average flow being a little bit higher, if you are actually working in the stream bank, I'm assuming that's going to be done on a low flow condition. But I, 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 you know, I haven't seen it, and maybe that would have helped if I had gone down there and taken a look at this. But this riprap is, is, can you just kind of work through the process of how you decided to use um, this riprap and some of these other things you have in here? Because I think if, if, um, if I was designing this or kind of laying it out, I would not want to have a stone in there because it does tend to heat up the stream, which is um, not ideal and you could use coral logs to build up that bank. It's natural um, coconut fiber, which would last a long time until uh, plants establish on that, and it wouldn't get washed away. But anyways. Uh, if I may, the reason for the riprap is because the stream takes a curve there, and it was a well-established bank. And obviously during high storm events, everything there washed out. We lost probably about three feet of the bank. Uh, so the purpose was to, I, I don't have to, Did it's highly up to the commission. I mean, is I, this my, my, that one time event that you're talking about when it, when it washed out, or is this, these two events didn't happen at the same time? I don't know what event it happened. So so this was there, and you're fixing this also? We, so we observed that when we're looking at the other issue. So, it, and where, where so much of the bank washed out, my, my, my purpose of installing the riprap is we, we have a disturbance there, I want to correct the disturbance, and I want to limit it from happening again in the future. Mm -hmm. And you know, and, and like I say, if you look at the bank, you can see it was well established, and it didn't hold the flow. Have you used uh, coral logs before? Hmm? I have not. They, Brian might be looking them up, but uh, I, like I say it's <clears throat> that was what I threw out there. If the commission doesn't want me to put it in, I don't have to. I can just put it. I can just put vegetation back. I can put the coral logs back in. It might be something to look into. It's uh, like I said, it's coconut fiber, and you're going to get plants back in there. It won't transfer heat. It uh, has a lot of benefits. It's usually made for bank erosion, so and it can be installed by your DPW department. It just needs to be staked in place. Well, we can look into it. I mean, it's 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 basically like a mulch sock. 
Okay. That won't hold there. But it's made of coconut fiber. It's made for this. Okay. Does it come in sections? Like it comes into a long tube. So it's, it's interwoven. It's not going to wash away. No. You no. It's held in a stocking. Really, it's really oh, it's solid stocking. material. Yeah. yeah. And we can look into it. If that's what the commission would prefer, I'll use that. I, I, I have no preference. Why don't you Why don't you take a look at it okay. and just see, um, you know, pros cons. Mm -hmm. Um, viability, I mean, stream if, velocities at that point. I mean, you could fine. you could do an estimate of you know, I, I, stream velocities. And I have well, I don't think you can legally do this. I mean, can you, you can't improve part of the project and save the rest more information. So uh, I don't know how you want to work that. I, I, I mean, if you want, I mean, if it's possible, um, you know, improve the explora exploratory excavation to seal seal the plug. And um, leave the restoration of the bank to. We can come back with something uh, additional information before before we actually do the work. Yeah, maybe that would be a good approach, just to, because problem then is you I can need, come back with more information. The problem is I don't know how you issue an order of conditions. No, we, well, yeah. we could do this. I I could issue, or the commission could issue um, an emergency permit to take care of this. To take care of the exploration. Exploration. Could do that. Um, no, I'm and we can continue. And, and then just continue the, the NOI for the, the request yeah. for, to look at the uh, additional information chat chart request and that at a future meeting. Yeah. Okay, that's and fine with me. It's an opportunity. Whoever's interested to go back out and look, mm -hmm. I could provide you the information. We use this this material in other places, um, and then I, yeah, I just didn't want to get my head around how when you were doing it. I'm assuming it was low flow conditions, but you. To me, this picture looks like you're just digging right at the bottom of the bank, and um, we wouldn't be digging. We're going to be just putting back the bank. Putting it back. There is nothing there right now. <laughs> yeah, so that's why I said I haven't been. Down. Yeah. So, but that's that. That would work. But I like that approach because it doesn't slow you down, mm -hmm. um, and it gives us gives everybody a little bit sure. more time to consider I, I, options and that's maybe fine with maybe me. pop out there because it is a public park. We what we don't need any special. Nobody on the commission needs a special approval to stop by and take a peek. Mm -hmm. That's fine with me. Okay. Uh, I like the suggestion that the. Yeah, uh, I do too. The, the, you know, the uh, coconut logs. Yeah. Um, cool. I, I think it'd be worth trying it. And sure. Get some experience with it and see how it works. And if it, if it, if it seems like it's a reasonable place to try it, um, and like I say, it does. We vegetate a lot quicker on other one of the rip wrap. It takes quite a while for anything to come up, with, you know, in between the stones. That's that's fine with me. Yeah. I just want to make sure what I put there stays, and I don't have to come back here in a year and say, okay, no, unfortunately the bank washed out again. Yeah, and we and we don't. No, want it shouldn't. It, it really should. That's be. good. No, I gladly try that. But that you know, the, what Chuck has suggested is fine with me. Okay. Well, why don't we go forward with that? Um, Chuck issuing an emergency order um, for the exploration work and for the plugging of the hole. You know, I think we can also put that in there, um, and we will just continue. The bank. The, the notice bank of portion intent. for the notice of intent. Yeah. 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 Both bank portions. Yeah. Chuck. Yeah. I'm. Yeah, You're making I, the motion. No, I can't. But, <laughs> <laughs> but you can suggest the motion. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm. I think that's a good solution. I, I, you know, if there's something that needs to be done right away, let's just handle it like that. Okay. Uh, any questions? No? Okay. Motion to do that. Well, you, you just <laughs> gonna well continue, to continue the notice of intent and to we issue. We don't have an emergency order in front of us. I'll just take care of that and okay. you know, tomorrow when you guys can ratify it at the next meeting. Okay. So, so a motion to continue the notice of intent. So I suppose that we continue this? Yeah, we're going to continue this forever, I think. So the date uncertain. We're going to be back data, next data meeting. Next meeting so the next meeting. So. Okay. When do you think the work, the exploratory work, might be? As soon as happen? you allow us to do it. Okay. Okay. Hmm? <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, if you're here, I mean, I thought you had to write physically write the order first. Well, I can just, so we're going to issue an emergency permit for you to do this exploratory mm -hmm. work. Um, and so you can start that. I'll write it tomorrow, and you'll have 30 days to complete it. I, I would assume that as long as um, crews are available, it will be done on Tuesday. I okay. almost said Monday, but Monday's a holiday. Okay. 
and then as long as it's dry out. Yeah. And then he can just verify what your you know mm -hmm. predictions were, and that would okay. be great. Okay, that will work. So, uh, we'll, so we'll continue the notice of intent. Motion for that. Okay. Second. Sorry. I'll second. Okay. All those in favor. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Good night. Um, okay. Um, let's get to uh, the next order of business then. Um, the all important moving of the site visits <laughs> to Sunday because Allison had uh, had almost no daylight on Monday. <clears throat> we were Why is it 8 30 a.m.? Did we change it? To we can discuss the time. Did we change it last year to 8.30 a.m.? I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't recall. recall. No, I think it's always been 9. It's always been 9, right. Okay, 9 o'clock, 9 o'clock on Sunday. Hopefully they won't go to 11 a.m. Right. Why don't we just say... Uh, oh. 9 o'clock work. 9 o'clock. I think it's what 9 you o'clock work. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. Um, I'm, not, I'm not willing to put an end time on it, but... <laughs> well, so why nine. don't we... It's just like 9.15. 9 to 11. So, um, um, just so, uh, well, I'll talk about it in a, in a minute. Um, so, okay. So why don't we do that starting at the next site visit, which will be on October 22, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19, 19. Yeah. 10, 19, starting 10, 19. Okay. That's birthday weekend. Oh, are you going to be there for the site visits then? I or can't maybe be not. For that site visit because okay. it's birthday. Okay. Thing, so I'll be away then. All Sunday. right. Well, we'll miss oh, you. I mean, um, yeah. might be at that walk too. That's so, Saturday. Oh, it's Saturday. Okay. Yeah, right. Can't lose a lot of this. Um, the other item of old new business, uh, the Pearl Street Water and Sewer Bill. Um, sure. So it's uh, the commission. Uh, usually approves payment for the water and sewer bill and I have one here for Pearl Street for sixteen dollars and fifty one cents. Okay, let me let me just add that um, I spoke to the billing department about whether or not this can be this fee can be waived moving forward because it's I think it's a vacant lot. It's a stormwater fee, isn't it? And it's the stormwater um, fee. Oh, it's not good. it's but not the use fee. She she told me it was the stormwater fee mm -hmm. and she wasn't sure but she would take up the matter with other people, and and um, get, but she wouldn't be able to get back to me for a n number of days. And I told her to call you okay. um, as well. So especially so since I want to hold a off on approving stormwater runoff. <laughs> well, I, well, I wanted. Well, I did explain to um, the, well, the schools and everybody pay it, don't they? Well, I don't know if it, if that's a fee that we, you know, legally by state law have to pay, or by town, if we be it by town by town law, we have to pay. But I did mention, well, we are also representing the the receiving water, and not only that, we're not really a, a for profit <laughs> group, and we're regularly spending money on this. That I have to pay too. The and town, I'm not a for profit group. No, but it's the town <laughs> paying the town. Right, you know, right, right, I mean, and we right. have um, town projects are that fee exempt, sense, yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, could there be any leniency on this sixteen, eighteen dollars we pay every quarter or every trimester? So. Let me go one step further. Why do we even have this lot? Is it conservation land? What, what is the story here? I think it's frontage, isn't it? Yeah, conservation right. I think land. I looked it up years ago. Is that where the parking lot is? For, for bare metal? Oh, I get it. Oh, it might be. Oh, it might be where that parking lot that empties parking out place? to the street. Yeah, and that's impervious service, obviously. But, yeah. Oh, interesting. Uh, yeah. Okay, so, but, um, you know, when's that bill due? <laughs> Does it say? Well, we're not fighting this bill. Yeah. No. You always pay the sure. bill and then fight it so you don't want to I think have the back charges. I think it's due November 11th or something like it's that. Not worse. We so want the discount. I think we should discount. pay the bill and, and pay it early, fight yeah. it. Let's discover early At pay. the same time. For the next one. Early okay. Right. You know, you're supposed so to do, you pay your taxes, to pay the, but then, you know, get a, I just an figure abatement. The, yeah, the, the horse has left the barn at that point. Well, 
Would you guys like to fight it? Do you want to pay it? Or? No, I say we pay it. No, oh, okay. we should pay this one. Yeah. Okay. It's water over well, the dam. But well, we are the protesting the okay. future, right? And hopefully we can get away from Well, I took up the matter because I just thought it was something that was a little worth worth asking the question. So. But um, we should continue on that on that tax. It's yeah. 70 Let's, bucks a year. Yeah. So do we need an official motion to pay it? I make a motion we pay the bill for Pearl Street as uh, listed. All, else all second. second. Okay. All those in favor? I think it's right. Allison, you voting Allison. in favor? Sorry. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> I was, sorry. It's really okay. Is there, are you looking up the property? Yeah, we were wondering where it was. Um, that's probably the only logical place in the parking area. I, that's what that I, yeah. So I, the person at Town Hall, and I'm sorry, I forget her name. I don't think mm -hmm. I wrote it down. Um, but she said she would look into it, which property it is, you know. And she did tell me it was the stormwater fee. Mm -hmm. And I yeah. said, well, that's almost ironic that we're paying stormwater that's, fee. That's what I'm saying. Um, so, um, okay, the other old new business. We should uh, get credit, shouldn't we? Right, yeah. right. We should pay <laughs> ourselves. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, they the, pay us. The other agenda item old new business is Rebecca Longley. Um, just to follow up, uh, she did have... This past week, I think it was, actually it was last week, she had, the, the day I emailed you, she yeah. had a, a meeting with the volunteer review subcommittee, committee, subcommittee. Um, and I asked her to please give me feedback about it, you know, let me know how it went, and mm -hmm. um, no French. Um, uh, I didn't hear from her. Um, also on her application, and I let her know this by phone message, I was having trouble reading her email address. Oh. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, so um, hopefully we'll hear something about that before the next meeting. Um, but um, one thing that Rebecca did mention is, especially during the winter time, she teaches uh, ski instruction on Sundays, so she won't be able to make site visits. Um, but she sounded interested. So Good. hopefully she'll, you know, if the selectmen vote her in before the 22nd, we will have an additional member. Um, she was on the commission before. She's, have you, she's a good person. Did you sit with her on the commission? Yes. Oh, okay. Yep. Yep. She seemed really knowledgeable. Um, I think so, she's so semi retired now. Yeah. Yep. So I think she'd be a, a, an asset, definitely. But still skiing. Yep. But still skiing. Yep. You got to live. Um, the other item on the agenda, <clears throat> I'm sorry, I'm just sort of taking over, I guess, reviewing the old new business is, um, hours for, um, <clears throat> additional hours for Chuck. Um, there's been some, um, Chuck's expressed interest in getting some additional hours and I've taken it up. We've both taken it up with Jean <clears throat> and she's. She seems to be indicating that there is, um, with some vacant positions, a little bit of budgeting flexibility in Chuck's hours. So, um, so she's considering it. She sounds positive um, in budgeting it into the next fiscal year. Um, now she says FY15, but that doesn't the fiscal year start Isn't it July 1st? No. Yeah. So I'm I'm not exactly sure how. How the nuts and bolts of the budget yeah, change yeah. would happen. Um, she seemed. I, I get the indi I get the signal that we may have to discuss the additional hours here and officially vote on additional hours here, on an exact number of additional hours. I met with her this morning to just sort of go over that briefly, and we didn't get into details. We just talked generally about it. Um, but I think that's a really good step forward. Um, a lot of people um, have been giving Jean feedback that um, that Chuck's a really valuable asset to the conservation uh, projects in town, and that you know seeing more of them in town is a good thing. Those additional hours that he right now are sort of slotted to take over the management of Matera Cabin. Uh, from recreation, who's How doing it? How many hours is it again? Yeah. It would be an additional like six hours. <clears throat> okay. um, 
Um, and John Fudo says he easily spends four to six hours a week. Um, really? Um, scheduling, upkeep, managing Matera's time. They're that busy. Huh? Well, they run a lot of um, recreation projects out of Matera Cabin. Plus, there's public um, people who want to rent it yeah. and have a party or have a meeting yeah, or have course. a... Um, do something at the cabin and so there's you know there's checking up on it afterwards making sure everything was taken care of and um, making sure it's secure and you know just general general ma monitoring and management of it so yeah, that's not and obviously that's not ideal I mean <clears throat> but it, 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 the, the talks wouldn't move forward unless new um, Thought we picked up something new to take care of, and Matera was something we had taken care of before. So I approached this by saying there wasn't enough time to even do what I have now. But to move forward, we needed to grab an additional project to take care of, which Matera Cabin made sense because it was originally part of what conservation wanted. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, to manage that place doesn't seem like a, no. a, too much <coughs> of a problem. Um, but all the, all the <coughs> Project or the all the scheduling is done through the <laughs> recreation department, and some of them, some of the programs are sponsored by the recreation department. Yeah, I don't think that John Fudo would drop out completely, but he he's not going to be actively showing it um, or returning phone calls. He's definitely giving up those two things. But he would he would still hold on to the recreation portion. Sure. And then we maybe. Yeah, I mean, it would, you would have to handle things like weddings and yeah. parties. I think I'd even have to schedule his um, recreation parts. He said he would, you know, when I spoke to him, he said he would keep up the advertisement, but everything else would be pushed back into the conservation office. Right, one person has to know what the whole schedule is. Right, and he has talked with me and with Chuck about um, doing like a phased handoff you know, so that it's not all, all of a sudden dumped, you know, because there's obviously a lot of logistic knowledge and scheduling knowledge that John has to impart. And, and you know, the, the soft, the, he has, John has some software to manage the scheduling of it. So that obviously has to get moved over, or at least access to that has to be added to your station, your computer. So, so th that's, that's all gonna sort of get hashed out as this goes forward so I think it's good and once once it's kind of once you're over that transition maybe you know maybe then it becomes an opportunity for you to not spend as much time on Matera and have that a small I mean it's not a lot of extra um, right. buffer for conservation work and projects but I think that's the, that's the hope. Yeah. Yeah. So. The selling point would be to pick up and you know more responsibility, and that was the cleanest um, way to do it. Yeah. At yeah. this moment. Yeah. So um, at some point, I think the commission may have to vote for those additional hours. So once that all gets, once those numbers if it become official, we'll take that up. When do you think that might be? I'm hoping by the end of October. Mm. Maybe that's too hopeful. I don't She's know. October, end of October and November is when Jean will be putting together the next budget. Yeah. So at that point, um, it, that's probably when to expect it. Yeah. Uh, meeting with her this morning, she seems uh, very, um, very busy with a number of other items, but it is on. Luckily, she's keeping it, you know, on her radar, and um, and it's it, it doesn't look like it's going to drop off. So, so uh, Chuck, you want to go over the town DPW department townwide permit date? Um, so, uh, George uh, had four permits to do uh, in before the end of this year, and one of them is going to be the town DPW 
town wide permit. And so he's going to present that. And I uh, had had some discussions with George, and I emailed him the uh, town trail wide permit. And I thought that would be an interesting thing for him to look at because he has kind of the same concept. He wants things that don't need approval and things that have um, we need to have uh, knowledge of, but he doesn't want to go through the process of um, the abutter notification and, and the formal notice of intent, and then things that definitely would need to be fully vetted through a um, application process. So George is, I think right now, he's just working on how he's going to convince uh, natural heritage to allow him to do certain things in those areas and he's going to kind of just look at the existing uh, town permit and uh, which was my suggestion and to make changes to it so we can see what it was and what it what he anticipates it being new I, I think George really wants a lot of freedom just as a warning yeah. Yeah. so you know the Commission would probably want you know, to be notified a lot more uh, than, than I'm anticipating George uh, would ask for. But uh, we're working through it, and okay. uh, we offered, instead of no, no notification, uh, emails or letters or, you know, waiting for a meeting and just a letter and, a, and some approval. So okay. that's, that's as far as that's gotten. Um, and I believe that he'll be bringing this up again in the next week or so. Okay. It's nice to see there's progress being made there. Well, I hopefully it's a positive gonna... project. And, and one of the things that I suggested shouldn't happen on this next uh, order of conditions when it goes through is it's not recorded at the Registry of Deeds because that's very complicated throughout the town with everyone having an easement in their property yeah. and having a... Um, some sort of uh, yeah. coverage on their property, and they always ask for some relief, which we can't do. Okay. Okay, 30, 34 Oak Street? Th 34 Oak Street. This is the property that had the uh, cut through, um, and the kids were just going from uh, Indian Tree Lane to mm -hmm. the school. The school. Over at Jackson. And we had a meeting in town about that, um, Gene Delios and Jesse Wilson, Bob Lalashore, and myself, and um, I know the commission had um, expressed some interest in kind of sending out letters and saying what's going on, and this is a wetland, and the all the I don't know boardwalk material is considered fill, um, but I I thought that. Maybe I wanted to uh, not blanket the neighborhood, but just to uh, talk to the people that were at the school because that's who I thought was probably using this area. So this is how this all started. And then we put this meeting together, and um, I guess there's a fund that, um, the Complete Streets Fund, and uh, there's some money available. So Bob wants to have all, this, all these little cut through areas in town identified and once we have a list of these, we're going to try to um, make easements for these places and then Big have pass. the DPW yeah, put in boardwalks or make a real mm -hmm. trail. And I don't know how far that's gotten uh, at this moment, but it's, you know, instead of um, shutting this down, they just wanted to bring it out of the, out of the dark and into the light and make it official. Uh, that's that's really what they were working on, and there's funding available to do this kind of stuff. So um, yeah. they thought of this one here and the one in back of that REI building and uh, the condos there just above mm -hmm. REI. So that would be another one, and I think that came up when we were here that that path would open up uh, a neighborhood to you know to a town. So yeah. It would make things more so walkable. So if anyone knows yeah. of places, just email them to me. Okay. Uh, I was going to send out an email, but I wanted to talk to you guys first about it. And you know, I don't know if you have any questions, but um, really it's going to be a, a boardwalk, if it can happen, a boardwalk, and um, you know, real public access. And they'll seek, uh, they'll seek um, a gifted easement, or they'll seek a taking. I, you know, I don't know. I, they could I, do a taking, but that is not. 
It's unfriendly. That's, not, that's beyond where my pay scale is. I'm, I, I don't know <laughs> what uh, how they'll do it, uh, but I know that they're interested in just kind of making it happen. There was really no talk at all about blocking it up. A, a taking doesn't necessarily mean they own the property. They can take an easement. Mm -hmm. But generally, there's some compensation involved. Yeah. I, th I think that makes the most sense. I mean, uh, it's this is clearly an area where kids are, people are going to walk through, um, <coughs> and you know, bringing it under management, effective management, just seems to make the most sense. We've said how about that is that encourages more use to it, right? And that area just west of the stream, which was so littered with glass and everything mm -hmm. else, that's my. It's going to get even more more used by yeah. kids. Oh, now we have this boardwalk in here and. They may be more use for the, and they can't control it now. Yeah. Nothing a little Constantino I can't fix. Yeah, and it's attached 12 volt battery to it. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to control it, but I just think it's going to get more use. Well, I mean, but if it get, but if it gets more use and it's and it looks decent and respectable, that encourages people so to to keep it yeah. improved, yeah. Um, and it kind of encourages stewardship and. Mm. You know, and I mean, then then maybe we have a leg to stand on to post a sign that says, "Conservation land, please don't it's kind of toss like, the trash." Better to work with the WNO than the one you don't. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think this in this particular one, there's there's two issues going on. There's there's unauthorized night use, and then there what what appears to be uh, unauthorized use for uh, a purpose to cut right. to cut to get from one place to another. So. So. Bob LaLaSure went down there, and for those of people that don't know, he's the town manager, um, yeah. and uh, the police chief went down there, hmm. and they looked at the bottles because we didn't know who was, who was going in there and drinking, and their determination was that it wasn't um, new, you know, cans and bottles and whatnot, it looked, uh, looked old. They must have cleaned some of it up because when we were there, <laughs> there was there was cardboard thirty packs that were still yeah. intact and readable. So, well, the, yeah. but the owner saying that his kids would go down and fill up garbage bags well, of the cans, every, every, every and recycle, and, and they were they were keeping yeah, up the nickel, with it. you know. So that, that wasn't so. There may be like maybe the stuff that in the dirt that they're not going to. There was out. historic stuff there. Yeah, I remember definitely. seeing there was some old stuff. Interesting. Shopping cart. Um, so the, and the, and the reason why that was important because it was. Who was doing this? And was it people that were using the field going in? But right. when they got there, there wasn't. And they may have been some cleaned it up. Some I guess cleaning so. Up, but when we were there, there was there was at least two thirty pack cardboard packs that hadn't been deteriorated by the weather, so they mm. were fairly new. Um, it's also the portion of the zip line I could put in that, in that area. Yeah. By the neighbor. Yeah. That's a that's a different area. Yeah. But it's. Yeah. Okay. So. All right. Well, and anyways, yeah. it's uh, it's not just that spot. It's any, any spot. Yeah. I'm not gonna yeah. know. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, so fine town. So yeah, if trails committee just repaired a bridge in the Birch Meadow Drive area of you know a trail that students use getting from Birch Meadow Drive up to Hensey and Criterion Street. Oh, is that between Castine and Hensey? Yeah. 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 It's an old. Yeah. It was an old Boy Scout project. Yeah. Area was out there. And there were boards take. There were boards missing from we a replaced bridge. About, about ten big boards or so. Okay. Yeah, somebody had already replaced some of them. Yeah. Some neighbor. But yep. we, we replaced the rest. What yeah. size screws did you use? <laughs> Would you say what <laughs> size screws? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. They weren't long enough because the, unfortunately, what's holding it up is pretty well rotted. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's got this old uh, telephone poles that are just soggy. Uh, the three-inch screws, but pretty pretty rotted out. It's probably good for about maybe four or five years. We probably have to rebuild that whole thing. Old yeah. creosote-soaked telephone yeah. poles. <laughs> I don't know anymore, but it probably okay. was. Yeah. <laughs> Not anymore. It's all leached out. Yep. All right. But you can see it's starting to cave in on the knees. I mean, it's going to give it a couple of years. A Boy Scout project. Upcoming. Yeah. There. And speaking of that, there's a Boy Scout project that's going to be at our next meeting that um, is going to come under the trailwide permit, but it does require notification. And it's in back of Matera Cabin, um, and then there's some stream back there. So yeah. looks like a, a really nice. Um, well, the plans look nice. Oh, you mean boardwalk yeah. going over there. It's like a boardwalk. Yeah. It's a, the thing about it is it's over an intermittent stream, and it's really badly eroded. 
Right, right. So, so the boardwalk seems sensible, and I guess there's part part of one already there, and yeah. they're just going to yeah. add to that. Yeah, connect to that. Yeah, um, we, yeah, we did a site visit. Yeah, there Not okay. a long distance from where they're where the the boardwalks are built. This is a terra cabin right? project, yeah. right? <laughs> It's good to staging area close to the project location. Um, okay. While, while we're on the subject, the boardwalk yep. out in, on the Pine Bell Trail, no, Pine Ridge Trail in the town forest. Yeah. It's just about done. I, I didn't get out to um, see the um, see it recently, but Tom Gardner was out there. I saw it a, like two weeks ago. I was out when I was in the woods. Just put some pack down, I think, right in the front. Yeah. Just, just get around just at the end. Yeah. They did a good job. I thought it looked good. Uh, the, when I went out there, uh, the caution tape was up, and um, there were just a couple, uh, like, angled, yeah. little angled right. chunks yeah. missing. Yeah, did those. Yeah, and, um, well, I think I sent I thought it looked, to everybody. But, yeah, that, I thought it looked um, good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, should we, uh, any other scout or projects that we should be aware of? Uh, no? Okay, what about the minutes? Kim's awesome minutes. I did not have any. But you did. You emailed them to me. Oh, I did? Remember, I put okay. Basic, not oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Sorry. Yeah, I, I forgot. It was that long ago. I wasn't there, but that was there. <laughs> <laughs> I still read You remember that one? Okay. Um, okay, any? I'm, I make a motion that we accept the minutes or any comments? Okay. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. All those in favor? All right. Um, and um, I guess the only other thing um, I just wanted to bring up was, um, well, two things that... Um, you only get one. Well, two. <laughs> it has to be two. That um, Chuck and I have been um, talking with... Uh, the DPW about um, maybe, you know, um, getting down to the DPW garage at some point um, in the next month or so to do um, just a PowerPoint presentation to let them know um, when and how they need to make a call to us um, and just a general overview of what warning signs we can give them. Uh, what to look out for, and um, and when to call us, and how to call us. What do you mean, what, what to look out for? Well, I'll take, for example, did you see that, that large uh, <laughs> rock road behind? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, just... Yeah, just that, that's a good example. A good example of, you know, <laughs> yeah, times that, times that you know, the DPW or, or the highway department, you know, a lot of these guys are out there. They're doing what they think they should be doing. They've got their marching orders from somewhere. And they're going out, um, and we just want to empower them to take take their observations and just do a sanity check yeah. against some of the warning signs we're going to give them. You know, certain types of vegetation, certain oh, you know, hum, um, I I would say you know vaulted roots. Um, you know, just and and what do they do at that point? Do they do they not do their work that they're supposed to do? No, they should stop and call us and. Um, you know, and if they can't reach Chuck, they can call me. And you know, if they can't reach me, it has to be done now. Can I wait a day? Should they check first? I'm sorry, say that again. It should be. Should they, they have, no, does it have to be done right away? Can they wait a day and talk to Chuck or you? Right, or, right. Well, we would kind of, we would kind of, but, but I, I think it would be helpful to get down there and and meet them yeah. on their turf and you know, coffee donuts and here's here's what we'd like you to keep your eyes open for. And I think. I think it's coffee, good. especially. What, we, what the goal is is that um, you know it's it's we're going to try to form a partnership. We want to empower everyone from the top guy down to the guy operating the lawnmower about what we look out for and some really obvious things. This is not a wetland course that we're going to yeah. be doing here. We're going to make it fun 
and we're not probably not going to be talking about buttressed roots because I think that even I really yeah. <laughs> started talking about that. But but something obvious and, and the fact that by identifying something, you're not shutting down a job, and we're giving you two things you can do: make a call to the office or call whoever the chair is, or Nika, which is the chair right now, is going to be available for a phone call when I'm not in town. So it doesn't stop their project, but how do they go about doing it? Can you come down and take a look? Yeah. And, you know, and then some of the things we're going to just show pictures of what we don't want. And, um, it's, it's, it's going to be real light. Yeah. And I talked to um, Jeff Zager about it. He thought it would be great. We'll go down to the PPW garage. Uh, it's just timing. That's all. It's right. It's pretty busy right now. They're trying to get ready for winter. He said winter isn't so busy unless there's snow. That might be a better time to do it. When it's really I thought, quiet. Yeah, I thought spring would be better. Um, I thought thing with spring would be better just before the mowing happens. It'll, it'll remain fresh, yeah. 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 But, um, well, we could get it ready. And and they're busy in the spring. Winter might be well, yeah, just before the before the spring. I mean, if you do it now, the winters yeah, they, they, they'll forget it. Snow plowing all winter, and then you know, who knows? What, what did they say? Right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, maybe there's some snow plowing issues too. I, I I mean, obviously, I know when they're picking up, doing the leaves, getting the leaves out of the street. I know I had a call once that they were just throwing them in this drainage ditch. They said they didn't do it. The homeowner next to the drainage ditch said they did. But, but that kind of stuff, uh, you know, just that's still. You know, Don't forget the most that. important part is you got to bring the donuts and the coffee. That's a, that's that's the way you get them to listen. <laughs> Spike the coffee. <laughs> so, uh, so um, and the other thing I wanted to just mention to people besides this is that unfortunately, as Chuck emailed everyone, unfortunately tonight is Kim's last night um, as recording secretary. And um, I think the position's going to be sort of put out to town hall employees. It to already was very cool and so hopefully somebody else will be courageous enough to spend their time <laughs> trying to decipher what we're saying and pull out the best parts and uh, put it into the minutes. Um, but thanks, Kim, for doing this all these all these years and. And While we're on the subject, I should say that this will be my last meeting also for the foreseeable future. Um, I've got a big project coming up at home. Uh, we've got a lot more work at work. Um, well, that's good. <laughs> yeah, we've got some personal health issues with some relatives that I'm going to need to spend some time on. Um, you know, I may be down, but I'm not out. Put in the time I need to. I mean, I, we do have some trails projects coming up in, in uh, Pinevale, just some repair work. And, and so, um, so that's going to take a lot of time too. So, well, I, I want to say officially, you will be missed. Um, I, you know, your experience and your knowledge of the town and the conservation. Um, the habitat knowledge, um, you know, you, you bring a lot to the meetings, and uh, it's it's going to be a, a gap. So, but I understand and um, and respect your decision, and we'll but, beg you to come back as soon as yeah, possible. I think in the the lot, my last hiatus, I I did keep an eye on things around yeah. town and let yeah. Bill or whoever know yeah. or, or um, the administrator when I saw something that was a problem. Yeah. So. So, but thank you. Yeah, but I am anticipating Rebecca Longley will be at the next meeting. I expect she will be. That's uh, that was the email I sent out. I was trying to keep some mystery to it, but they did send that email. I yeah, I, I saw something to that effect. I think that's the word I got from Paula. Yeah, I, there's once you get the recommendation. Yeah. Yeah. They just endorse it. She just has to get sworn in. Yeah. So, so. Yeah. so I take it that means you're not available for the chair position. That's <laughs> yeah, that's, that's correct. No. You're can, we, can we vote him that. in and then? <laughs> so I'll, I'll send for the next an, couple of. I'll send an email around to Paula Shane and Laura Jam and all the town people as well yeah. as all of you to, to make yeah, it official. Like yeah. Resign. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, we hope to see you back either, you know, presenting yeah. or. <laughs> yeah. yeah, right. Yeah, it could be. <laughs> um, but, you know, you've been an invaluable member and, uh, and uh, keep in touch. And I keep trying to find people to take it on. So I guess we all need to keep putting the feelings <laughs> Recruit. out. Recruiting. Recruit. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we definitely need the advocacy yeah. for membership. Yeah. Well, I should point out that I just retired last week and I'll probably be moving out of Reading sometime in the next six months. I'm not really quite sure. Are you really? Yeah. yeah. Which is mean that you'll have to leave the commission. Yeah. I found that out yeah. the hard way when I had to temporarily move out of the yeah. commission. So. It was six months in Colorado and six months in Rhode Island. So that's what's coming up. So, so you going change. to you going to end up in Colorado, uh, Rhode Island? I'm going to spend summers in, in Rhode Island. Okay. And in Colorado. Sounds nice. Yeah. Like uh, November to May. Maybe like that. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So that so how much longer do we have you on commission? Six um, I may stay until the spring. There is a chance I could leave on January first, but uh, okay. I, I'll probably know within the month. Okay. Good. And Thanks for uh, giving us a hands up. Yeah, Allison. Oh, yeah, Allison. Yeah. Did you really know? Anybody else going down the hall? I mean, I got a new job. That's about it. Congratulations. Where are you, you working? Like yeah. yeah, I'm working for um, it's like an environmental consulting firm, but it deals mostly with like energy and energy markets. Cool. They do a lot of uh, like basically matching big companies like Yahoo, Walmart, Home Depot with renewable energy um, farms and stuff like that. So they like. Wow, that's Magic great. Up, cool. So it's power of purchase agreements. So it's getting more renewable energy into the grid. So it's a cool company. That's it's great. boring what I'm doing because well, man, I'm total fool, but it'll get interesting. Yeah, it'll get interesting. It's interesting. Well, they, congratulations. They've started doing like this, like every company now is doing like a three month internship. So it's basically like a three month a interview. Yeah. 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 And then they decide whether to give you the job or not. Or yeah. you can decide to leave if you want. No strings attached, which yeah. is nice. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, we do that where, where I work, too. Yeah, I mean, everybody's doing it now, apparently. Wow. Because, so, like, a lot of my friends are doing it, too, so. But, yeah, it's interesting. Little trial period. Exactly. Because it's a small like, startup. It's like a federal startup, so. Are you getting a bunch of shares? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be great. So, that's good. Yeah. So, that's good. Great. Okay, anything else? I have a Yeah. Well, I, just, I, just, I went out to that meeting on the pipeline that was out. Oh, you right. did? Yeah. And um, one of the things I got most of was that the Tennessee pipeline had just filed the FERC FERC, which is this federal energy thing, and we can access that site and look yeah. at some of the plans. I think we should find out where they're talking about in Reading that is going to get through. It looks like Wilmington, Reading, maybe Linfield is going to get some part of these little shunts that go off. And, and what they stressed mainly was that you really have to identify the vernal pools. We just can't say they're out there because a lot of our maps are like 100 feet off and stuff like that. So we have to get way ahead of that. And if, once we know where that is, we really go through that area and identify all the vernal pools. Because it's, yeah. it's too late because once they put the plan in, yeah. it's not going to change. We have to give them all this information yeah. much prior to that. Yeah. And then As argue plan by what, why they shouldn't do it or should do it. So you think they're going to increase the capacity of the line that goes through town already? I haven't, I haven't seen anything, so I don't really know where they're planning. Hmm. See, I saw a map from, I did look that up. The um, major thing's coming in to direct it. Yeah, it looked but like it was the main line. Yeah, the main hmm. line was going north. Yes. Uh, but but there was something. Because then it's going to Maritimes. They're going to sell the gas up to Canada. Yeah. What's the, what's the size of that pipeline, did they tell you? Uh, 36 inches. Oh. oh. That what, is what's the, what's the one that goes down by the mass, mass turnpike? I think that's 36 as well. Really? That's, that's a lot of gas. It's, it's big, yeah. And the one down there leaks all the time, and they're not required to maintain, to stop the leaks. Up to a certain... If, and if they did that, they wouldn't have any rationale for putting another pipeline in. Because they're right. putting in because they say mass needs it for a couple of days in the winter when we run low on gas for heating. That's why we need this whole up new pipeline. Other people say, well, if you just closed your leaks, <laughs> you know, you wouldn't have this issue. Yeah, like MWRA. Plus yeah. it's redundancy. Yeah. It's redundancy too, I'm sure. Um, well, it's just to get them to, they've, they've got so much gas coming out of Pennsylvania that they're trying to sell it to Canada and Europe. Right, right, right. 
Anyway, I just thought we should probably get way ahead of that. You know, no, that's a good suggestion. That's why it's, it's hard. is putting that other line in because of the redundancy. Mm. Oh yeah. 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 It's it's hard to. That would require some kind of mapping. Yes. Yeah, we have detailing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's hard. To, I saw the I saw the big state map. Right. And I thought, I don't even think I can even discern where the Reading town boundary mm -hmm. is on this. Mm -hmm. On that one. On that one, where the little two line yes. came in. Yeah. So. But I, hopefully, I, 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 I But maybe we could find a more detailed picture of that. Yeah. Because they seem to have lots of detailed quad by quad pictures going through Pennsylvania. I'll see if I can get into that, that um, the link they gave us. Um, yeah. That Eugene Benson set out. Yeah. Here's the links to go into the FERC, and we can drill down. Yeah. With the permit numbers, and we can maybe get the detail out of it. So I'll try and look at that. Yeah. And Good luck. A little more free time. Yeah. Email us if you find it. Okay. Chuck. So uh, this came in today, but uh, it was just a national grid is uh, notifying us that they're going to do some maintenance on their gas and power licenses, um, footer inspections on selected structures along the line. It only goes through a small corner of Reading. Right here, from Cedar Swamp. Got a oh, little bit of it. Yeah. So, I don't know if we... We did um, send out an intern out to that area, and... Um, you haven't seen him since? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very true. Uh, he didn't report any uh, vernal pools out there, so I think uh, and there wasn't any on the map prior to that, so... Okay. But that that sounds pretty low impact. Just their inspection. inspections. Well, the they're doing inspections, but they're going they're going to use low impact vehicles, treaded vehicles, and they're going through with ATVs. So I don't expect they'll be in Reading fifteen minutes. You know. Yeah. Right. So. Right. But if, if anyone says, "Hey, what's going on out there?" I didn't know you can ride on that power line with ATVs or something. They're, they're, they're experts at that because most of the power lines go through wet areas. So mm -hmm. they really know how to get around in that area without doing the minimal amount of damage. Probably a drone's doing Swamp tracks. Yeah, no, get the drone's doing it. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other business? Yeah. 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 Yeah.